Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and welcome to the 10th Q&A session and here I'll be ask, answering some of your user submitted questions and I have to say the quality of questions that I'm getting is great. We have a variety of questions here and so let's get on with the same and the first question that I have is from, from Dr. Prodigious and he asks us why do hard disks fail? Does the brand make any difference and is the quality proportional to the price what you pay overall what would you advise if I'm looking to buy an external hard drive and which one do you generally buy? If the hard drives fail within the warranty time will the company replace the same? Quite a bunch of questions and the thing is that uh, standard hard drives like this have a rotating platter and they have multiple heads and generally they are pretty reliable but do remember a hard drive is a mechanical device and it can fail any time sometimes the head can crash it can also crash due to power outages and stuff like that uh, generally the modern hard drives are pretty reliable but they can fail any time if you have just watched my previous video about raid in that i installed a new hard drive that's a western digital uh, hard drive three terabyte drive and it failed just after 20 days so yes a hard drive can fail any time that's why i stress to make backups regarding your second question uh, Regarding the quality proportion to the price, generally hard drives are in two variants. We get the enterprise versions and the standard desktop versions that we normally use in our PCs. The enterprise versions are ideal for usage scenarios where the hard drive will be used constantly, let's say 24 by 7 in a server environment or let's say database or something like that. And those uh, drives are designed to be a little bit more resilient. But if I recall in the past 10 years, I have hardware, uh, hard drive failures of just around 4. Again, I would say if you're buying a standard uh, hard drive or external hard drive, just go with the uh, brand which offers you the maximum warranty. If the hard drive fails and it's in warranty, these uh, vendors will replace your hard drive. You have to just file a RMA process. Regarding the brand of hard drive, I generally buy Seagate or Western Digital hard drives. And generally, I have bought more of uh, Seagate hard drives compared to western uh, digital hard drives but that's just a personal uh, preference again i would say that which vendor offers you the highest warranty go with that one and the next question is from the para warrior hey ranjit love your videos thank you i have heard that undervolting the processor is greatly accepted cooling solution for laptops is undervolting the voltage on the processor to make it uh, run cooler safe if so how can i do it thanks a ton very interesting question the para warrior and yes you can undervolt your laptop's processor and that will greatly reduce the uh, heat produced by the same you can actually do that by using software tools again uh, i won't say that it is completely safe any day overclocking and underclocking is uh, going to be a little bit tricky if you do it wrongly but underclocking on a laptop is i would say pretty safe and uh, just be very careful while underclocking your processor uh, do it in a very small increments like let's say 0.25 volts and just test the stability of system again the worst thing that can happen is that you'll get a blue screen of death if you do a lot of uh, what do you say underclocking uh, there's a great article by this site on this forum you can check the link i have posted the link in the show notes below you can check that link there uh, many users are doing this underclocking thing and you can just refer to that site we have actually software tools that can help you in underclocking your processor but again uh, do it cautiously just don't go overboard with the same the next question is from sanket and he asks us hi ranjit uh, should i buy the htc one v or the galaxy s plus these are android phones i use the net a lot on mobile phones please suggest personally which one would you have bought the thing is that HTC One V and the Galaxy S Plus both are great phones. The HTC One V is uh, having a 3.7 inch screen. On the other hand, the Galaxy S Plus is having a 4 inch screen. Uh, and generally, I prefer having a larger screen size if you're going to do a lot of web browsing. Personally, which one would I have preferred? Uh, I would have preferred both of them, but I would have gone with the third option. I would have chosen the Motorola Atrix 2. You can check out the review of Motorola Atrix 2 that I have done. It's an excellent phone and I feel that phone is very good if your main aim is web browsing. It comes with a 4.2 inch screen and it's a pretty nice phone. I hope this info helps. 
the next question comes from the Max Steel and he asks us, Hi Ranjit, I'm a great fan of your videos. Thanks a lot. I'm planning to buy an Asus laptop which has a i5 Sandy Bridge chip. Should I wait till the IV Bridge comes in the market? Also, what will, the, will be the uh, approximate uh, price difference? Keep up the good work. Uh, the thing is that if you are just going to buy the laptop, I would suggest that just wait a little bit and go with the IV Bridge part. Technically speaking, Intel is pricing the IV Bridge parts same as the Sandy Bridge parts, but I expect the vendors to price the IV Bridge uh, laptops at a slight premium, let's say about 10% price difference. Uh, again, uh, you won't find the IV Bridge laptops right away, but in the next couple of weeks, the IV Bridge uh, based laptops should start hitting the market and the advantage specifically that you will get when using IV Bridge chip on a laptop is that you will get better battery life and you will significantly get uh, good graphics if you're using the internal graphics provided by the chip. The next question comes from jroj one and he uh, asks us, I have uh, seen many laptops with DOS OS instead of Windows 7. What is DOS? Can we use it for normal computing leads like gaming, music or MS Office? The thing is DOS stands for Disk Operating System. Before Windows GUI environment, everything was DOS. You need to, if you have ever used a Linux command prompt, a DOS will look like that. You need to type in a command and the software works. It is not a GUI environment. So uh, your second part of the question that if you want to use the latest games and uh, etc., they won't work in DOS. Generally, manufacturers bundle uh, these new laptops with DOS to reduce the overall cost. But still, you need to install a OS like Windows 7. Or if you don't want uh, to install Windows 7, then you can install alternative OS like Ubuntu, etc. And the main reason these vendors uh, ship uh, units with DOS is that to reduce the overall cost of the laptop. But again, if you do not have a proper Windows 7 license or whatever variant of Windows that you want to use, I would not suggest you to buy these laptops because if you go outside and purchase a windows license it will be significantly more expensive the next question comes from siddharth prime and he asks us what is privilege and non-privilege mode in a processes and are there any other modes the thing is uh, privilege and non-privilege mode in a processor let's say uh, first i'm going to talk about the privilege mode Privilege mode is uh, handled by the kernel and the low level IO activity. You cannot directly access the privilege mode of the processor. It is hidden from the user. But the general other softwares etc that you run, run under the non-privilege mode. And uh, the next question comes from ABDLRD and he asks us, can you suggest me a cheap motherboard for i3 LGA1155 socket? I'm planning to do a crossfire with two 6850 overclock GPUs. Thanks in advance. The thing is that you want crossfire and uh, you're going to use two GPUs. So uh, the cheapest motherboard that you can buy for LGA 115 socket is the H61 chipset, but I do not think so the H61 chipset will support crossfire. So you need to look at the H67 chipset. The uh, next question comes from my galaxy r and he asks us hey ranjit i recently bought a hdtv and i now want to buy a cpu just a cpu to play games on it cause i feel games are better on the pc than consoles my budget will be rupees 35000 to 40000 please suggest me a config sorry i can't uh, quickly suggest you an entire config uh, but i would uh, suggest that as you have clearly mentioned you just want a cpu not a gpu do note that the most important thing for playing games is a gpu but if you do not want to install a gpu i would highly suggest you to go with uh, i5 iv bridge processor uh, that will uh, have the new intel hd 4000 graphics and using that you can play most of the games in medium resolution again if you want to play all the games at the highest setting you will need to put a dedicated gpu card you can have a look at my previous videos in which i have made a budget configs of 30k and about 55k to get a brief idea about the system and the next question we have is from Techish tv and he asks us i was planning to build a pc so i wanted to ask you will a kingston ssd 64 gb v100 uh, which is the cheapest ssd will be enough for a windows 7 pc Currently, uh, I am using a 75 GB of my drive and my system drive is about to finish. 
Yes, the Kingston 64 GB V100 series is pretty affordable and I think so it sells for just about 4800 and for that price for a 64 GB hard uh, SSD it is pretty good actually and it depends upon uh, the size. I would definitely say a 64 GB uh, boot drive for Windows 7 is more than enough. For example, for my needs, I use a 120 GB SSD, but uh, I do not load most of my programs, etc. on the SSD. The biggest space uh, that takes on your hard drive or SSD are the media files like video, pictures and music. So what I suggest is that put your OS etc and all your programs on the SSD and load these big media files in a separate hard drive. For example, personally, I use a 120 GB SSD as my boot drive and I have one more standard hard drive that is a one terabyte drive and I load all my media files like videos etc on that drive. That way I get the speed of the SSD by just having my boot drives and my applications on the SSD and those uh, media files etc which are large files are kept on a normal hard drive. I suggest that you do something like this to get the benefit of the SSD and the large storage capacity of a traditional hard drive. I hope this helps. And the next question comes from DIVA DXT and he asks us, I currently own a Galaxy S2 that's an Android phone and I'm thinking of upgrading to a tablet. Should I go in for an Android tablet or the iPad 2? And he says since I'm not too impressed by the iPad 3 and he continues I do not own any other Apple devices and I'm considering the iPad. Is it okay? Do you think that after getting used to the freedom of Android uh, that that it provides will I find iOS difficult to use the thing is that iOS is pretty easy to use it is very easy but uh, you need to install iTunes to make it work again uh, I would say if you are used to Android Android uh, provides a lot of flexibility that the iOS does not provide one important thing is that iOS devices will not play back flash content so again I would say that it's a personal preference I would say if you are a power user go with the Android tablet but if you want the ease of use and you have multiple family members that are going to use the tablet go with an iPad. The next question comes from the Sonu34 and he asks us I would like to know when will the price of 3G in India come down because right now it is very expensive and also has 4G started and the second question is which network the, of 3G provider is the cheapest and the best. Um, let me answer you the first part of the question regarding the 3G price in India. Yes, the 3G price in India is pretty expensive and I do not think so. The pricing will come down drastically any time soon because uh, the 3G spectrum that is allocated is very little and these uh, pr providers had to pay a lot of price to the government to get that spectrum. So they need to get back that amount and thus they cannot subsidize the 3G. Also, there is only a limited amount of 3G spectrum available. So you won't find the 3G prices to come down significantly. And the second part of the question is that uh, have 4G services started in, in India? Yes, 4G services have started in India. And I think so Airtel has started it in uh, West Bengal if I'm not wrong. But definitely as the year move forward, we will see for more 4G uh, rollouts. And yes, I believe 4G will address the broadband needs in India. Again, which uh, 3G provider is the best? I cannot answer this question because it differs from region to region because in every region in India, there are different 3G providers. But I can tell you one thing, I used to use BSL 3G a lot, but these days BSL 3G sucks. Uh, the next question comes from Shubham and he asks us, my Intel stock cooler is broken and I'm planning to buy a Corsair H50 cooler. That's a water cooling solution. Is it better to go for a water cooling or air cooling? My case is a Cooler Master 430 Elite. Shubham, the first thing that you did not mention is what kind of a processor are you using? I would personally say that if you're not a very heavy overclocker, uh, you can easily go by with the air cooled solution. Personally, I'm using a air cooler. I'm using this Cooler Master Hyper 212 plus and it is providing me with great results i personally use a i7 and using this air cooler i was able to bring down the cpu temperature uh, about 15 degrees so i would say that uh, if you're not doing very heavy overclocking stick with the what do you say air cooler instead of water cooling 
and this is the last question and this is from ARSH2015 and he asks us can the laptop heating problem while playing heavy games be solved by running or installing the game through a USB 3 hard drive I'm using a Dell Inspiron 15R i5 processor with 1 GB NVIDIA card and this is the second part of the question but let me first answer this no by just installing or running the game from an external hard drive enclosure like a usb 3 or usb 2 your laptop heating problem will not be solved because do understand uh, the cpu and the gpu inside your laptop is uh, getting heated up due to heavy gaming and that is causing the heat so by just loading the game from an external hard drive etc that will not solve the problem and the next part of the question is uh, he asks us one more question uh, can you tell me is there any software that can tell you about the list of devices that are using uh, my wi-fi router uh, the thing is that if you just log on to your admin interface of your router generally every router has a section where it will show you the devices that are attached to your router so just look at the same but you can also use a third party software utility like a i in ssidr just google this this is a great utility and this is free and it works on windows uh, linux and mac and using this also you can figure out the devices uh, and even the nearby wi-fi networks in your area i hope this info helps so these were the questions for the 10th q a session i'll be doing the next q a session next week so if you have any tech related questions that you would like me to answer please post them in the comment section below and started with the q a tag i hope you found this video helpful that's it for now this is ranjit from tech2bus.com and i hope to see you in my next video